wrap with Erin, and Erin, this is a great wrap bracelet project, and I love the way that you bring the, really bring the color into the piece. So let's take a look at your bracelet. Thank you. Well, this bracelet was inspired by that original color palette with the turquoise and the orange and the yellow. And I, I came up with this idea because bracelets are really hard for me to create. They're kind of my jewelry kryptonite. I can never seem to make a bracelet that's long enough or it's too short or it's too long. It, it just never seems to work. But I love the idea of a stack of bracelets and I love the idea of a wrap bracelet. So what I did was I came up with the idea to combine the two of them. And so when I show people this, they say, wow, that's a great stack of bracelets. And then when I show them that you just unwrap it, even better. Even better. It's all one piece. Great. It's a great way to combine a lot of different techniques, too. It is. It is. So what I've done is I've taken the second color palette with the red and the pinks and the greens and the purples, and I created a a look that would go along with that color palette. And basically what I do with this particular uh, wrap bracelet is to uh, have three different styles of bases or segments. One would be a leather segment, like you see here. One would be a chain segment, and there is different ways to utilize the chain and the leather. And then one is just simply a strong segment. And by combining all of those segments in ver basic variations, you can actually achieve the look of a stack bracelet without having separate bracelets. Great, and it looks like these are all about the same length. They are. I, what I did was kept them all to about a six inch length, and that's obviously too short for most people to wear as a bracelet, but they're all just connected with a simple jump ring, and you can add additional jump rings in between each section to make it longer or to fit your wrist, your okay. individual wrist. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. So I thought we should take a look at some of the uh, techniques uh, to actually create some of the segments. And I'm going to start with this particular segment right here. This one uses these little resin roses, and I thought that they were really cute and very springy. And basically all I'm doing is creating a wrap of the roses and kind of sewing them to the, to the leather using a very thin gauge wire. Okay. So I start with a six inch segment, and I have a 1.5 millimeter hole punch, which is used for uh, metal, thin metals, and I'm just punching little holes. So you're basically creating a pilot hole for your wire? I am. All right. And originally, I just sort of used a pen or a, a pencil to mark with an indentation where I wanted the holes. And you're not going to see that. OK. So Sometimes I even use an awl. And yeah, all if it's a very simple hole like that. That's true. Sure. Okay. So then the next thing is to take this very thin gauge wire. I'm using a 26 gauge wire. And probably it depends on how much wire wrapping you want to do. But I would say maybe 24 inches, 24 to 30 inches to start off with. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to work with wrapping the leather with the wire first, just outside of where I put my holes. So you're kind of anchoring it down. I'm anchoring it. You can use your pliers to kind of crimp it right into the white to, to the leather so that it will stay put. And I'm just going to wrap it really tight around there a few times around. It can be messy. It can be it can be really uh, pushed together if you like that look. If you like it a little bit more clean. I'm just going to wrap that a few times. Okay. And then I'm going to really basically start sewing. So I'm going to push the wire through the holes that I already made. And you could use this technique to add any beads. Any beads. The flowers are nice because they have a flat back. But I could see it working with any other shape too. Yes. Okay. So I'm just sewing the beads right onto the leather using that thin wire. Yeah. I go up one hole and down the other. And then in between, I want to anchor that a little bit.
by okay. kind of wire wrapping in between. Again, just like I did before, I'm going to wire wrap either very messy or very controlled. Just keep it kind of consistent. Just kind of consistent, yes, yeah, so that it has a nice look. And it actually brings in, again, a metal tone. You could use the silver or gold wire or if you like a bronze wire or a, any Even a bright color. Any bright color, yes, if you have yeah. a colored wire. So you're going to continue doing that all the way down so that you end up with something like this. Okay. And you can use a similar technique to attach a slider. You can, yes. So right here, I have a couple of different sliders. This particular slider has four little loops on the back of it. Okay. And that makes good connection points. You have to take a look at each one because they're all a little different. This one only has two connection points because it's more of something you would use in a necklace situation. But the good thing is that this has some holes through it so that you could actually string your wire right through that to wire wrap that and it will hide the uh, connection points. Yeah, so you can think a little bit about where you want those attachment points to be. Correct. So again, I'm going to find the middle. I marked it with just a little bit of pen. You're going to hide it behind that so you won't really see it. And just start by wire wrapping tightly around the leather. Okay. Just to anchor it. I'll get that started a few times. And then Again, this is about 24 or 30 inches. Then I'm going to run the wire through one of the holes and place the slider on top of the wire, or on, excuse me, on top of the leather, pulling this tightly. So you can really stitch it down. I'm kind of stitching it down using those holes as a connection point. Okay. And you also have a special technique for making your loops. I do. So taking a round nose pliers, I'm going to take about a two inch piece of wire and I'm going to make a coil on the end. And the reason I do that is because I find it actually hard to make a simple loop that doesn't want to, that doesn't want to stay closed. So I take my round nose pliers and sometimes I mark my pliers with a with a Sharpie marker so that I always do it in the same spot. Yeah. But I just coil it around maybe two times and make that little coil. Then I can string on the bead and it's not gonna open and it will make it very secure. And again, I can just take it, take the other side and keep coiling that around until it reaches the top of the bead it makes for a, a much more secure connection point. Yeah, so then you can turn any bead into a link. You can. Now how are you going to attach that to your chain? Well, I'm going to use some jump rings. I have some little jump rings here. And I would just open them. And I have these little pieces of chain that I would just attach using the jump ring. And then actually mixing these metals brings in that sort of yellow tone, just like we talked about before. Right. It adds a little bit of an accent to your work. I'm very fond of mixing metals. Yeah, it's a really great look, I mm -hmm. think. So we'll connect this section. Right, and so that other gold piece is an example of where you made your beaded links in between. Correct. And these would actually go very well together in the same bracelet. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Because you're bringing in the gold with the gold chain and the silver with this kind of crystal tone. Definitely. It certainly brings in another, another element of color. Okay, now when you're doing a strung piece like the beads that you have lined up mm -hmm. here, it looks like you have some larger beads toward the center, smaller beads toward the outside. I like to do that in the patterning. I, I like to have some variation in the size and the shape. And so in this case, I'm going from a round and a barrel shaped bead to this more larger crystal rondelle shaped bead. And I would just string the beads. And then when I got to the end, then I would crimp it. Yeah. And you could do this right from the spool if you like. And what I'm doing for this section is because I, I want six inch sections, I am going to crimp this to a 
jump ring so that we have a connection point. Okay. So just simply take the jaws of your crimping tool. They look like an oval and then like a C shape. Put the crimp bead or the crimp tube in the first section and squeeze gently, which will make it oval. Then open the tool, bring it back out and put it in the second one and it will make that sort of C shape. Right. So now you've crimped that and then t you want to make it round. So then I take it out of the tool, turn it back around, put it back in the first section and squeeze. Okay, Just and so that. then to bring this all together, all mm -hmm. these pieces have jump rings on the end and you're attaching a magnetic clasp. That's correct. 